Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today we're going to do the ninth prompt of November 2021. The prompt uh, is black. So I intend to do, do a film burn animation. So basically it includes two kinds of concepts. One is to import or export geometry nodes data to shaders. The second is actually a particle system that is following the spines. So let's just start. Here in Blender, let's go to nodings, create a plane, add a geometry node tree. Uh, I think since we're burning a paper, and the paper is really just a plane, so let's add a subdivision or a subdivide mesh to create a geometry. Maybe six. Six is basically the maximum you can go by manually, otherwise, you have to type maybe eight, nine, ten, whatever stuff. Take a delete geometry, fluid compare. So that we can use the selection, take a noise texture, so that it's a it's kind of a realistic burning effect kind of stuff. And I'm going to delete the face instead of the points. It does not really matter, but I like to delete the face instead of the points. Just a personal preference. So now we are actually deleting these geometries using a noise. Decrease the scale so that it actually this kind of area becomes larger. Okay. Uh, I think two should be fine. Okay, so this is how it works. Here, what we can do is actually add a subdivision surface, decrease the level before and add the level after. So, so basically just to smooth out these kind of edges based on your personal preference, just to know that I don't increase this level too high, otherwise you will freeze your blender and it will crash. Okay. Here, I would like to visualize all these kind of attributes. So let's plug this factor into the group output and add a shader. shader. Yes, shader. I'm going to lock the shader as well. Uh, I'm going to delete this principal BSD because it's too large. So let's take the attribute nodes. We're importing the information that we output from geometry nodes, but we need name this attribute first. So let's name as the end so that we have a noise. Okay. And let's go to the material preview node that we can actually see this kind of uh, grayish colors because of our noise. And it matches our geometry deletions. Okay. Here you may want to ask, hey, you can do all these kind of things within shader nodes without creating all these kind of subdivision. So why do I use geometry nodes? The reason is that I want to use these kind of values as a trigger of particle animation. That's why since we cannot export the data from shader to geometry nodes, but only from geometry nodes to shader, then I need to create a kind of a mask within geometry nodes first, and then tweak them within shader. Here we have these values to control this entire animation after putting to the map range. And you can see the effect. It does not only delete the geometry, but also darken the texture in general. Once we have done that, there are two kinds of things I would like to do. Is basically two masks based on this color or factor. Let's take a color ramp and mix RGB. So assume our original texture of paper is a wave texture. And it ha as it has been burned, then you definitely see all these kind of dark edges as we see previously. So how to mix them together? So let's take these bands and let's use Y, which looks nicer or and more natural. And I'm going to plug this color into a factor, create a mask maybe using constants or maybe cardinal will be fine. And just to crush that to a level. And take this color one as darkness. Then you can see this effect we have both original texture and the burner texture. Okay, here I'm going to tweak a little bit with this color one. So let's create another color ramp, take another factor. So you can use the factor since this is completely black and white. It, they're essentially the same, does not really matter. Here, instead of using this black and white, I'm also going to add a third marker and take that to the bright orange. Uh, let's shift the D. Yes. And plug that to color. So now we have this kind of gradient. 
from original texture and it has been wiped out like this okay. uh, it's also possible that uh, instead of using this mixed RGB node you use the mixed shader nodes so that you can use a principal BSDF for our wave texture and the emission shader with the uh, texture and finally we can actually see how it has been gone and a very important uh, thing is that you can increase tweak this emission shader and we can see the balloon effect so you can play around with all these kind of effects but I think here let's we can actually delete this so that's yes we do not have a wave texture anymore okay so this is how that will burn a, a paper and everything essentially is determined by this kind of mask so we can actually tweak it more okay next we're going to start to talk about the particle system so we no longer need to worry about the shader anymore the principle of morphing particles has already been discussed in my tutorials uh, However, usually one morphing particles, as you know, I'm always using this kind of delay valve. In this case, however, we're actually using this noise as a way to trigger the particle release. I'm also going to do things differently. Uh, however, when we start to do all these kind of crazy things, we always start the same as we create the particles. We can increase the amount, maybe 200 goes to solid view, we have all these round points. It's very important if you start with a simple setup before you move on to something more complex. Okay. Once we have this point distribute, I'm also going to take a curve linear node. Curve linear node is really just a curve line, but I offer the count directly so you do not need to resample it. Then let's take a point instance, take the curve linear, we have all these sound points. Let's set position so that we can add a noise on the top of that. Because we are going to add a noise, we need to realize the instance so that we can access all these kind of vertices. Amount, also take a noise texture. This is the time I'm going to use noise 3D so that I have a mid-level option. Plug the color into offsets, everything has been waved. If you play around with the evolution, you can actually see all this kind of movements. Or another way that you do is to take the position translate so that you can play around with this kind of z value so that they move. But it's kind of not necessary since we're going to define a fixed path for particle movement. This is just uh, for fun. Okay. So here there is a problem that uh, it does not only add noise onto these kind of tips but also the origin which I want them to be fixed so here let's create a curve parameter basically a mask by using this vector mask and take this scale so that the starting point will always be fixed no matter how you actually try to evolute this entire path Here, let's the color ramp with these factors, or you can use a float curve, which might be more efficient. But I think in this case, color ramp is better than float curve because you really just want to crush it. So you can use B spline constant. No, I think it will be fine. Okay, once you have that, you start to have all these kind of paths. You can also increase the resolution, length, values, whatever stuff as you wish. We can also increase the frequency. Okay. The reason I'm creating all these kind of torturous splines uh, is because I want my object to follow these splines, or actually my particles to follow these splines, so that they can have a good orientation. Knowing that this method must not be efficient because uh, we do not only create the particles but also create all these kind of spawns with probably a high amount of vertices. 
definitely you can decrease that, uh, um, but it's still a lot of spots compared to just the particles. But I think uh, depends on the use case, it's kind of worse that. And in this case, I just uh, take a follow spline. So let's uh, take a decrease the size. Okay. And take a point instance. So let's instance a cube. The reason I instance a cube instead of a spherical particle uh, is because I want to mimic the kind of effect of motion blur by elongating that. So I want to create a ratio between these kind of x, y, and z. Um, plug that to instance, and then we can decrease its size by plugging the scales into scale. Okay. So now we have all these kind of sides with randomness, so you can play around with these kind of factors. Finally, take the factors and they're not oriented well because I did not plug this rotation into place. So now, this particle is moving as the direction they goes. So this is a kind of cheating method when we do not really have a particle system for such kind of result. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we need to use all this kind of value created from this noise to affect our factor. Here, let's uh, firstly just uh, generate all this kind of, let's uh, join all this kind of geometry together so that we can see everything while we are working. Here you may think, uh, hey, let's just uh, connect this socket directly to factor and we have some sort of the effect. However, uh, just uh, directly running to the conclusion that this is not the desired result uh, the reason is that, as I have explained many times in the tutorials, that uh, this field system, for example, if you have a position node, this node does not carry any information by its own. Uh, its information is actually evaluated based on the geometry that we connect it to. However, here we delete the geometry with this geometry, and it's a similar effect as this geometry. It's also very similar when we talking about this linkage and this geometry. But the geometry has been changed here, or actually they are completely different uh, things. So the value, uh, which actually stems in this vector, which is the same as this position, uh, will be completely different. That's why you don't get the same results because of different geometry. Here, since we want to use the values from this kind of geometry for this geometry, so we need to actually transfer the attribute from this geometry to that geometry. So this is the attribute transfer, or transfer attribute. Okay. Here we need a geometry. So this geometry may come from anywhere. I think this linkage will be the best. And then we can actually plug this value. Okay. And plug this attribute into the factor. Then you can see the result has been changed a little bit. Uh, there are several things we are going to tweak. For example, uh, in this, zero value moments, you realize these, uh, these kind of particles has already floated in the air, which is about 0 0.5. This is because the value we input from the factor is about 0 0.5. Okay. So here are several things I'm going to change is basically have a color ramp and to reverse the order of these things so that they sit on the ground when we do not move anything. And as we start to animate it, then you can see that the paper part has all these kind of particles that stay in a place, but the burning part has all these kind of particles that fly into the sky. The reason I'm using this color ramp is because I'm limiting this kind of effects on these kind of burning edges. That's why you might feel kind of a similarity as we color ramp the within shader. Okay, before we move on to further steps, I want to mention this uh, transfer attribute. Currently, we're doing it on the position because our curves and this kind of paper are completely different geometry, so there is no reason to actually use index. As for these kind of two options, nearest the face interpolated and the nearest, I do not uh, really know the difference, uh, but I think uh, both of them are working fine despite some difference. So you can choose whichever you want in practical life. I would probably just stay 
as default. Okay. Another thing is that here we're evaluating based on a position, okay, source position. So it's the same as the position attributes. And when we talk about discount position attribute, at the most of time, it's evaluating all discount for curve points. So we have all these kind of curves and there are 15 points on each of them because we set the count as 15. Um, and their position is here, here, here. So it's not very consistent for each spline. And it may cause any kind of bugs uh, if you do not work that carefully. That's why we need a method to ensure this source position is working correctly for each spline. So there is a consistency. To do that, I'm going to take a trim curve and trim the spline into zero. So there is only one point for each spline. So everything has been unified to one. And here, let's take a transfer attribute. I'm transfer based on the index because it's transfer from spline to spline and here let's take a vector because it's position attribute for each spline also it's the spline domain uh, once we have done that let's transfer this attribute uh, in eventually you may not find any kind of difference whether you have this or not uh, but it will solve most of the problems if you are trying to rotate this entire setup using the parenting mode for example, uh, the reason I'm using this parenting node, so let's select an empty. So this is just an empty, it's, there's a, nothing special. And if you rotate that, you can see this spine is still going upwards. This is kind of a trick so that you can keep this kind of consistency and I'm burning paper. Okay. Here you can realize if I'm moving this kind of empties, the entire spline or the kind of particle spawning are changed completely. This is because the geometry has been changed. So this position attribute has been changed. So everything has been changed. So if you want to keep everything consistent, you need to capture attributes. Uh, I have a preset which is attribute, uh, attribute info, which basically do this kind of stuff. You can just take the position so that you have less noise occur as without this node. So in reality, this is just the capture attribute with position. There is nothing special. Uh, and you can still see all this kind of uh, movement of this spline. This is because the noise has not been captured attributes. And this noise should capture attribute with this, uh, I think this, uh, this step. Okay. Um, yes. So you can add another attribute info node. And there might be more issues but uh, generally it's just to keep adding on this kind of capture attribute so that you can actually keep this kind of consistency. Uh, so now it's actually being fixed. Okay. But uh, this is just the side story if you're working uh, differently. So here we basically have finished the, the basic part of this animation and all this kind of setup. Uh, I would like to add a control within these inputs uh, we can name that as a value uh, to replace this value so that i can control everything from outside let's just set the minimum to be zero and the maximum to be one and uh, use this value to replace it okay so that i can actually animate everything based on just this slider and you can see this animation uh, there is uh, one kind of issues that's when this value is at zero and I do not want to see all these kind of particles. So here, what I can do is directly plug these values into the scale average so that I control the scale. This value goes from zero to one. That's why if you increase this value, these kind of particles will be extremely huge. In this case, you can use the map range, but uh, since it's a value from zero to one, I'm just going to take a multiply and this kind of value is the maximum value that you will actually reach. So 0 0.1 should be just fine, and you have this. And I really want to like to see all these kind of particles be large enough when they just be born from this system. Therefore, I'm going to take a float curve, 
uh, we can actually do the same thing within the uh, f factor as well but I think yeah probably whatever I think I'm going to do with this float curve so that they will be maximum large when they are just born. Another thing is after they fly to the sky at the end I want them to disappear so let's add actually let's add another point and another point so that's one point goes to zeros at the end big enough point so so this is the effect that we we'll actually see so start from the zero the paper is not being burnt and when they start to burn we start to see all the sound particles they fly to the skies and finally they disappear somehow so this is completely kind of procedural and this is the animation if you do not like all this kind of noise then you can change all this kind of noise maybe increase the frequencies uh, or decrease the frequency however you want it's another story or change the seed is also a way okay so this is the basic control of it here i want to remind you that this animation is fake simulation so there is no simulation there is no physics no particles uh, it does not work as a function of time uh, it's you use a keyframe to control everything which is very nice because you can view everything in real time without baking but the limitation is that this factor is working based on value from 0 to 1 and this is 0 to 1 as we can see from this color ramp the black is 0, white is 1 you can see this window is extremely tiny which means this animation for this kind of particles to from uh, flow from the end to the top will be extremely fast in this case the animation will not look good at all therefore we need to actually use a little bit of menu method to make this animation looks nice here instead of using this uh, value we transferred uh, for factor we're going to use that as a trigger for mixed float node so when this kind of value so take a float compare when this value is the greater than zero then it should trigger a time function that we evaluate on b so what happens right now is that the, in our value of 0 0.5 then we have all this kind of burning status and on this kind of burning edges we have all these kind of particles so if we trigger a time function then these particles should flow based on the time so it's not uh, controlled by this transfer value but based on the time okay so here what we do is just add a time info node time info node has a division factor so the more you divide the slower it will be uh, note that our factor is working from 0 to 1 and the time usually we call is based on this kind of a frame number which means one frame is already from starting to the end so it's very very fast and that's why we have to divide uh, a lot so if I divide 100 it means it takes 100 frame for this kind of particles from goes from the beginning to the end so this is kind of idea but without an offset if I directly plug this float B to the place then it's at frame 1 it may not look like a problem but at uh, later frames it will just be a lot of problems and there is no um, offset in this case from particles to particles that's why you can see they just all stay the same place here but we want to have a kind of a gradation that's why we need to actually fix something the offset must be based on the noise that we has been used to eliminate those kind of paper okay so we need to do another transfer before we actually plug this noise into our time offset so let's organize these three actually let's just break up and there is a kind of a shortcut so if you hold Control shift and then d then you actually duplicate the node with the linkage in this case the only thing i'm going to replace is use this noise to the attribute and the rest should stay the same geometry source position okay once we have this we're going to take a map range to define this kind of offset uh, our noise goes from black to white and due to the functionality that we're using which is actually this uh, 
less than, which means the black part will be eliminated first. So if we plug this attribute value, uh, it's ranges from 0 to 1 for our noise. And the minimum should be kind of smaller than the maximum. Another thing is that this time offset is offset based on the this kind of negative value. Okay. So if we plug this maximum, uh, pre currently we do not have a strong effect because we do not really know what's the offset that we should have. So we need to actually animate this value. So let's take a this entire range as one to three hundred. So at frame zero, let's add a keyframe. Uh, at frame 300, let's add a keyframe of 1. So this is how this animation should go. So we're burning a paper. And at the moment, so this red, uh, this orange appears. You know it's about 100 frame. So what we do is type a 100, negative 100. And then at the end, when everything disappears, I think it disappears about uh, 190. So let's take a negative 190. So now we, if we can actually kind of play this animation, but also to use this mixed float to replace this float curve, because we also synchronize the sides. Then if we play this animation, and you can see how this particle is being generated accordingly, so from the place. So there is kind of a delay that's occurring. Okay. And we can turn on this speed variation so that they just the flow at the different speeds and up to the sky everything disappears so this is a little bit of menu because everything is essentially based on your keyframes results but this is the best workaround that I have it might be more procedural uh, if you are calculating the rate of this transition but that's another story I do not want to dig too much into um, I think this is probably it. So you can definitely tweak more with this animation, editing the noise, or other things. But basically, this is idea about how I made that animation. Okay. So I, I understand it might be a little bit complex uh, in the late phase, but maybe we will catch up these topics again in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.